What's going on, y'all? How's everybody doing? Listen, so this is day four of this 21-day victory fast that I'm doing. All right, this is I'm on day four, and the Holy Spirit's been ministering to me, and He's been telling me, "Listen, I want you to start sharing some of your testimony." And so I've been trying to work up the courage, right? Because it's like I could sit here and preach the gospel all day long, but something about me giving my personal testimony sometimes it's hard for me to talk about. Almost like. It's hard for me to find the words or find the language to talk about it because it's some it's something that's so personal and it's something that like when you when it comes to your your personal life and what you've been through sometimes you try to avoid it but that very thing that you're scared to talk about is going to set somebody free amen so listen <clears throat> it's nerve-wracking but um listen growing up my whole life <clears throat> as a teenager in my early 20s even into my mid-20s before i got saved I was in the streets. I wanted to sell drugs, do drugs. I wanted to either make it rapping and be another street rapper or just be in the streets the rest of my life. I'm not even gonna lie to you, you know? Back then, the attitude I had was wicked. And basically, I wanted to be the next Tony Montana. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all, you know? But I always knew deep down inside, like I always knew God was calling on me. Because if y'all see my testimony on YouTube, I talk about how when I was three, four years old, a prophet came and he prophesied over me and he told my mom, you know, he started speaking in tongues. And that was before my mom was saved. And she was like, what's this guy doing? You know, she thought it was weird because she didn't know. So he said, wow, I don't know if you know how special your son is, but God just gave me a vision of him preaching the gospel and speaking to large crowds of people. And so my mom never even told me this. I don't even think that I knew this till I was like a teenager because she, know, you know, she didn't know if she really believed in it or not, especially when I started growing up. And when I got introduced to the streets, I started doing illegal things to get money, <clears throat> started going to jail and stuff like that, started, you know, doing whatever I was doing. She was like, well, this guy said this, but now my son in the streets and he's screwing his whole life up. So he must be a liar not realizing that everything that I was going through, every bad decision, every mistake that I made was all part of the process. And I'm not gonna say that me living in sins and some of the things that I went through, I'm not gonna say that that was God's will, but then again, you can still be in rebellion for a certain time of your life and still be within God's will through some of your mistakes because God can use it and he can flip it around and use it for his glory. Amen. He can use every situation that you've been through in life, everything that the enemy meant for evil, he can take it and use it for good. So, you know, I went through most of my life in the streets and I knew God was calling on me. You know what I'm saying? I was one of those people. I never fit in with the crowd. No matter what I tried to do in life, no matter who I tried to be, what kind of false identity I tried to walk in, God always told me like, hey, you know you mind, right? And I had a point in my life where I straight up, I told God, and this was just a few years ago. I told God like, hey, do you not hear me? I don't want nothing to do with you. Let me do things my own way. I want to sell dope. I want to be in the streets. I want to go to the, I want to go to the strip club. This is my life. Let me do it how I want to do it. All right. I said, go call on somebody else. This, these, these were my thoughts in my head towards God. And obviously my life didn't work out like that. He allowed me to reach my lowest point to where I was homeless. I was living out my car. I was trapping, selling dope out of my car. Nowhere to go, living in a motel, getting my car shot up, right? Bullets flying past my face. And mind you, <clears throat> it's crazy to me, right? Because I think back even through my rebellion and even through my disobedience, when I literally told God I ain't want nothing to do with him, he still had his hand on my life. He still had his great. I still had his grace and his mercy. Even through my disobedience, through my rebellion, telling him straight up, I didn't want nothing to do with him in the streets, gangbanging. I still had his grace and his mercy and he still had his hand upon my life. And he said, this one right here, right here. Uh -uh. He said, you're mine. You're mine. They can't have you. And what's crazy is I was, I was drunk one night. Got my car shot up, bullets flying past my face, windows getting shot out. And the dude who did it, obviously I wanted revenge. I wanted revenge bad, right? But not too long later, God said, uh-uh, it's time. And I got to a point where I was like, I dropped down on my knees and I said, hey, 
all right, I give up and I give in. No more doing things my way. I won't do things my way anymore. I won't keep fighting you. I won't keep running from you. I won't keep running from you. However you want me to do it, just tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it your way, God. What you want me to do? And so that was that. And um, about almost a year later, not even a year later, the dude who tried to, you know, the dude who tried to get me, he went down for a quadruple homicide. A quadruple homicide. I was supposed to be that fifth homicide. Because clearly dude who was trying to, you know, who was trying to get me, he don't miss his target. But the problem was, he failed to realize this one right here had the hand of God upon his life. Amen. Listen. And now I stand before here. And I stand before you guys today. I stand here today before you guys preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, working for the kingdom of heaven. I just want to let y'all know no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what you've been through, understand something. Jesus already paid the ultimate price. The blood of the everlasting covenant. Don't ever think that it's too late. Don't ever think that your life is too far gone, that you're too far gone. Don't ever think that you've made too many mistakes. Don't ever think that you've made too many bad decisions to come back from. Church people might tell you that, but the Bible tells you different. Amen. The Bible says that we triumph over him by the blood of the lamb and by word of our testimony. The Bible says that you are more than a conqueror and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So I just wanted to let y'all know today, whatever you're going through, whatever you've done in this life, stop feeling ashamed and stop self-condemning yourself. Amen. Because in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. Listen, he paid the ultimate sacrifice. He already paid for your victory. He already paid so that you could be redeemed, so that you could come alive once again. And you could walk into the identity and the purpose that he has for you. Don't let the devil lie to you. I love y'all and God bless.